three years of my life have been the time. I've had no surgery, hand surgery, neck surgery. I lost my UFC contract. I lost all my money in a split decision when I bet on myself. But all you motherfuckers out there that are in the dumps right now, just keep persevering and keep getting up in the morning. Damn it! Let me tell you guys, my motivation is my son. I've lost five fights in a row, and I thought I was going to retire, especially after neck surgery. But I wake up, I see my son's picture, and it motivates me to get up and train and train and get better. And if anything motivates you motherfuckers, get up every morning, work your ass off. What's up, guys? Hey, so I stopped by Extreme Couture and caught up with my buddy, Justin Jaynes. Justin Jaynes is a MMA veteran. He's been in the UFC. He's been in Bellator. The dude is an absolute savage. But I, I really wanted to find out a little bit about him, his journey, and it's just really cool hearing these UFC guys. And Justin talks so good. So it's, I was like, okay, I got to talk to you. You guys know I don't, I'm not real big on interviews, but when somebody talks as well as Justin... And with his attitude, trust me, this dude will have plenty of jobs all over. He hustles his ass off. But it was nice to go over to Extreme Couture, meet Eric Nixick, who's the famous trainer of Francis Nagano, and just to hang out with those guys. So you'll see a lot more of this type of content on this channel. So uh, yeah, subscribe, and let's talk to Justin. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. So now you're a former UFC fighter. Correct. Trainer, um, podcaster. What else do you do? I'm a jack of all trades, man. You know, I do commentary for a, a regional show called Fusion Fight League. It's based out of Montana. I also do commentary for a local based fight show called Tough Enough. Uh, it's the rising stars of MMA, the best guys in Vegas before they make it to the big show, whether it's Bellator, the PFL, UFC. Uh, they kind of go through Tough Enough through Vegas. Uh, so, you know, kind of in, in my older transition out of the sport, I still want to stay relevant in the sport, uh, but I know I can't be able to compete in the cage all the time. So uh, even if I'm on the other side of the cage, I just love being a part of the sport. Well, let's talk about that. Your sure. transition, you're not done with this sport, right? Absolutely not, no. So you had a run in the UFC, yeah. and you just had a big victory in Utah. Yeah. So where are you at right now? Are you waiting for a short notice call? Because that's how you got your first fight, right? Yeah, you know, I'm down for a short notice call, uh, but, you know, really, uh, I had neck surgery last year, uh, and that kind of has held me out, and it kind of... You know, it's at the end of my UFC career, I was having neck issues, but you know, it's like you're a fighter, you know, you just want to kind of grit through that stuff. You don't really realize how serious it is until it's too serious. Uh, so yeah, I had to get neck surgery last year. Uh, I was on the mend and I still feel I'm on the mend. I'm not 100% just yet. I felt great in my fight, uh, but you know, with training and stuff, with the wrestling grind and the grappling grind, you know, there's just so much pressure on my neck. Uh, so right now I'm just kind of doing some rehab or some prehab per se, uh, <laughs> so I don't get injured again. Um, but hopefully uh, by July, August, I'll be back in the cage throwing some fists. Did you have a fused, a fake disc? Uh, yeah, I, uh, artificial disc. So we went in for a double disc replacement. When they got in there, the doctor said, hey, uh, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. One was broke for sure. The other one, eh, good enough for now. He thinks, well, I'll probably be back in the next five or 10 years to get it done. Um, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's still, it's still rather, rather new technology they're using uh, with the disc replacement. It's the newer version of what Aljamain Sterling had. But, you know, honestly, I, I feel great. I feel a lot better now than I did prior, uh, but I still will have the kinks and the, and the shooters uh, going down my hands sometime. Yeah, so I had that same. I had my neck fused. Okay, right on. It, it kind of my arm went numb. Did your same, arm go numb? Yep, like I lost that? all my strength. Before, I had four inches of atrophy in my left tricep. Um, my bench press was like a hundred pounds, ninety-five pounds for almost a year. It, it was pretty oh, terrible. Dang. So, and I gotta address this. this is This is kind of what you're famous for. Sure. So, this is before betting was illegal. You guys were allowed to bet on yourselves. Correct. Did you really bet your entire purse on yourself? I did. I did. And uh, you know, it's. It's bittersweet, dude. I'm a gambling man. You know, I've, my whole life has been one big gamble. Moving out to Vegas, pursuing MMA as a career is a huge gamble. Uh, it's funny because my buddy Boston Selman, when he was in his UFC run, uh, he's the one that came up with the idea. He's like, I'm betting all my money on myself and I know I'm going to win and blah, blah, blah. Well, it turns out he didn't bet the money on himself and he ended up losing anyways. But after he said that, I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to do that. And uh, I went out. I got a hold of a couple bookies. Uh, that, uh, you know, Vegas is full of them. Trust and uh, yeah, I was able to you know bet it on credit, and as soon as I lost the split decision, I paid him out the next day. So it was a oh, bummer, bittersweet. And I do remember that that was a close fight. Yeah, now, you got into the UFC on a short notice, what, three days. Yeah, catch weight, and you yep. made weight, and the competitor didn't, which Correct. is ridiculous. Yeah, 
and then you just knocked him out? Yeah, 30 second knockout, man. I remember I was on my way to go eat some Thai food with my girlfriend at the time. And uh, I got the call from my manager. He said, hey, can you make weight in three days? I was like, all right, bet. Um, it was a relatively easy weight cut considering the situation. Uh, you know, Frank unfortunately missed weight. You know, he was very apologetic about it. At, at that point, Chris, I didn't really give a fuck about him missing weight. I just wanted him to be able to, because if he has too hard of a cut, he can call out of the fight. So I told him, you know, because me and him have the same manager. I'm like, hey, Frank, it's no big deal. Just make sure you're healthy. Make sure you're able to show up. And, you know, he showed up the next day, unfortunately for him, you know, it went my way, but it doesn't always go that way. So, you know, it just happened to be my day that day. No, it's, it's a tough game. So I cover a lot of motocross and supercross. Yeah. And it's very similar in the sense of you're hero or you're zero in these yeah. sports. And how do, how do you deal with that? How do you, I mean, you see that you see all the other fighters coming in here after wins, after losses. What's that like? Man, I tell you what. You said it right on, you're either zero or the hero. That's actually a perfect analogy because when I knocked Frank out, you know, I had thousands of messages in my inbox telling me how great I am. You know, it's, oh man, you're the next big thing. Oh, that left hook you have is so powerful and this and that. And that's all great, but as soon as you fall off, you know, my next fight in the UFC was on kind of a short notice, down in weight class. I had to, uh, it was a four week notice fight to fight Gavin Tucker, toughest guy I've ever fought. And after I lost that, people you know kind of turned on me and uh the first time it was tough man is because you have all these strangers telling you how, how bad you are now and how much they hate you and this and that and it was definitely a, an adjustment a personal adjustment i had to realize that these people are on the couch watching me on tv so go fuck yourselves or on youtube channels, or on youtube like yeah yeah for sure <laughs> exactly now that I, I i understand it and have a different level and now how is it when now you guys you guys have champions in here you got sean strickland in here you got chris curtis you got some big names how is it training with those guys man it's you watch these guys come in day in and day out you know these guys you know you come in you look up to them chris curtis is one of the best guys you could ever meet man always so helpful always offering to be in everybody's corner sean strickland you know whether you agree with his his uh his thought process or not the guy busts his ass and just to watch him come in here every day put it on the ground like he this guy works his ass off love him or hate him sean strickland's the hardest working guy in the gym uh you know and, and he deserves all the fame he gets because of how hard he works he's not just a guy that comes in here and fucks around like i know some people you know watch him on you know uh, social media and they're like oh this guy's an idiot Dude, he's very, very smart. He works his ass off and, you know, everything. He's genuine. It's not, it's like a, he's not Colby Covington. He's not putting on a front. That's just who he is. I think that's exactly why people love him. And I think, so now you're, how old are you now? 34. You're 34. So you're still in your athletic prime. Yeah. Where, what's next for you? Uh, you know, I'm just trying to book a fight right now. I have a lot of great up and coming fighters coming up. You know, I have Rena Norville. You know, she's uh, early in her pro career. I have Elise Anderson, uh, Lars Wittenberg, Elijah Aris. Like, I got a lot of guys that I'm focusing on because, you know, honestly, Chris, I've accomplished all my goals in this sport. My goal was to get to the UFC as much as lackluster as it was. That was my goal. I moved out here. I've accomplished everything. Now I want to help these young athletes. And, and I still want to compete, but I want to help these young athletes accomplish all their goals as well. Do you find teaching the sport helps you in your own fighting? Because I, I know they say to learn something is good, but if you can learn it well enough to teach it, you know it on a higher level. Have you found that? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, one of the things that I like to say a lot is to be good at a move, you got to know how to do a move. To be great at a move, you got to know how to do a move, defend that move. And to be an expert at a move, you got to know the, how to do the move, defend against the move, and be able to teach it. So that's kind of been my been my thought process ever since moving to Vegas in 2012 is, hey, I can show, I can do a double leg, but now I can show you how to do a double leg, and now I can defend against a double leg, and that makes me an expert in moving. That's kind of my, my uh, analogy towards, uh, you know, being an expert at uh, some kind of series of something. Yeah, and now life as a fighter is not all picnics and roses. Like, it's tough. Like, yeah. it's, it's struggling with money. You guys are in here beating up your bodies. What are some of the fighters that aren't in the UFC that don't have health coverage? What do they do? Man, it's... I'm one of them, you know, we're all one of them. Unless you're in the UFC, you're really not covered by any health coverage, you know? Like for my neck surgery, I hurt my neck in the UFC. Uh, when I got cut from the UFC, you can only claim injuries, you know, up to 30 days after your, your cut. Uh, so I had to go on Medicaid, man. I'll be honest, like Medicaid had paid for my surgery. I was very fortunate enough. Um, and that's what a lot of these fighters have to do. You know, you gotta look for government assistance to, 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 to keep up this grind because not only are we training, like training people is exhausting too. I wake up, I come to the gym, I work here, I train here, I socialize here. This is, this is almost my home away from home. Yeah, and you, and you survive off of training people, side jobs, you yep. security work, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I do security gigs on the side, I mean, I'm a hustler, dude. It's, yeah. it's, it's, we got to hustle. I'm, all, I'm a big time gig worker. You know, I, I have a lot of friends that, you know, the thing about coming into this gym is everybody, like, for instance, I got to meet you, you know, you're in the motocross scene, 
All right, well, I'm, sometimes I get to meet a doctor, you know, he's in the medical scene. Sometimes I get to meet this other guy that, uh, one of my best friends, I've met him, he sells tractors for a living. You know, I know all these diverse people that know somebody or something. So, you know, helping these people, in turn, they help me a lot too. For instance, Ray Matheson, one of the doctors that trains here, you know, big shout out to Ray Matheson that's helped me from day one for my career. You know, my buddy Daniel, uh, you know, had an infection two days ago, I call Ray call Dr. Ray, hey, my buddy, help bring him in and takes care of him for free. Now, I don't expect things for free by any means. And I tell this to Ray, I was like, dude, you can char like charge, you know, I want you to make a dollar too. But these guys are just so generous coming in, seeing the grind, being able to come in here and knowing the work that all us fighters are putting in and not getting hardly anything out of it. Um, you know, I'm very, uh, very happy and, and uh, very excited to say that, you know, I have great friends uh, from meeting that I've met through the gym. So a lot of my followers are motocross followers. Where can they find you, your podcast, and yeah, if they want to follow your career? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you can go to Instagram, J-A-Y-0-9-M-I. That's J-A-Y is in my first three letters of my last name, 09, which uh, is my favorite number than Michigan, M-I, where I'm from. Uh, that's on Instagram, man. Our, uh, the 10-7 MMA show, we're a small show, but we're, we're, we're building right now. We just crossed like 250 subscribers, which isn't a big deal, but you know, for being just a totally organic for the last six months. Uh, it's a slow, I mean, you know, it's a slow, steady race to, you know, to get up there. Um, I do another show, uh, Jesse on Fire is another show that sometimes I co-host for. Uh, he has 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, Fusion Fight League, you know, I commentate for them, and then Tough Enough as well. Oh, you know Jesse? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know him really well. <laughs> I watch that show. He's, I just, he's awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. A, a really good friend of mine. I actually just was, uh, I'm going into business with his wife, actually. Another gig. Uh, yeah, a supplement company. She works for a supplement company, and we're going to start wheeling and dealing together. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Awesome. Thanks for your time, brother. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you.